There's a concrete channel in the California desert wider than most highways, moving nearly 2 billion gallons every day. It's part of a 700-mile system that took 60 years and billions to build. Yet in 2025, California is getting just 35% of the water it asked for. Allocations are down, rationing is back. The state faces a gap of up to 9 million acre-feet between demand and supply. And the mega-projects meant to close that gap? They won't be finished until 2045. So what do you build when the biggest water system in America still isn't enough? It started in 1960. California was exploding with population. LA, San Diego, the entire southern coast was growing faster than almost anywhere else. The problem? Southern California is a desert. Some areas get less rain than the Sahara. Millions of new residents need a lot of water, so something had to give. So California came up with an insane solution. Move a river over a mountain. The California State Water Project became one of the most ambitious engineering feats in US history. 700 miles of canals, pipelines and tunnels, 21 dams and a 444-mile California aqueduct, 30 feet deep, holding water from the Sacramento Delta all the way to Los Angeles. Then came the real insanity. The Tehachapi Mountains were 4,000 to 8,000 feet high. Instead of going around or tunneling through, California decided to pump billions of gallons straight uphill and let gravity carry it back down the other side. That's an entire river lifting up to 1,926 foot every day. The whole thing cost $1.75 billion in 1960s money, which translates to about $13 to $14 billion in today's dollars. When they finished, it was the largest state-built water system in American history. The water was enough for 27 million people and enough to irrigate 750,000 acres of farmland. And for a while, it actually worked. Then came the 1980s. Northern Californians started asking what all this diversion was doing to their rivers, fisheries and ecosystems. In 1982, voters killed the peripheral canal and the era of building giant surface systems effectively ended. So California pivoted underground. Cities tapped ancient aquifers. But even drowning groundwater that took millennia to form couldn't keep up with demand. By the 2000s, California turned to the one option everyone had long dismissed as too expensive and too energy hungry, desalination. By 2015, California tried two bold approaches. The Carlsbad desalination plant pulling 50 million gallons per day from the Pacific and Orange County recycling 130 million gallons per day of treated wastewater. Both faced steep costs, technical challenges and environmental pushback, proof that even smart solutions can run headfirst into barriers when the stakes are this high. Right now, California is building three megaprojects that make everything before them look small. These are billion-dollar construction sites already underway. Project 1 is Pure Water Southern California, which is the future of wastewater recycling. The price tag is $4.6 billion right now, though it could climb to $8 billion once everything's at full scale. When it's finished, this facility will take treated wastewater and run it through microfiltration, reverse osmosis and UV advanced oxidation to produce 150 million gallons per day. That's enough water for 1.5 million people every day. The federal government was desperate enough to see this work that they kicked in over $99.2 million in grants. If construction stays on schedule, the first water should start flowing sometime around 2032 or 2033. This is industrialized water manufacturing. When you spend up to $8 billion on sewage recycling, it's because every other option is already exhausted. Project 2 is Sites Reservoir, which is California's first new major reservoir since the 1970s. Sites Reservoir will get 1.5 million acre-feet, which is enough to supply 4.5 million homes for an entire year. It's an off-stream reservoir, which means there's no river getting dammed up. Instead, the reservoir fills through pumps and canals that pull water from the Sacramento River during wet years. Then during droughts, when water gets scarce, all that stored water flows back into the system exactly when it's needed most. 
The cost sits at $6.8 billion as of August 2025. They secured over a billion dollars from a 2014 water bond, then approved another $219 million increase just this past August to cover overruns. If everything stays on track, Sites Reservoir should open for business in 2032 to 2033. And if you want to know the brutal part about all this, even that massive amount won't be enough to solve the crisis. Then there's the biggest, most controversial and most expensive project, the Delta Conveyance Project. 45 miles long, buried 150 feet underground, roughly 30 feet in diameter. They're spending $20 billion on a tunnel because the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta is dying. It's one of California's most fragile ecosystems, home to species like Delta smelt and Chinook salmon that are barely hanging on. The current system has to shut down its pumps whenever conditions threaten these fish, which means during storms and atmospheric rivers, the pumps sit idle. The tunnel changes everything. New intake points will send water underground, skirting the delta entirely, allowing pumps to run during atmospheric rivers without destroying wildlife. Last winter alone, it could have captured an extra 700,000 acre feet. But they won't be operational until 2045. Regulatory approvals are expected late 2026. February 2025. Water agencies got barely a third of what they had asked for. And if California gets lucky, maybe that number crawls to 50% by summer. That 35% is nowhere near enough to fulfill the demand. Let's look at the math. The California aqueduct moves 650 billion to a trillion gallons per year. All the desalination plants in the state combined produce about 100 billion gallons annually. Pure Water Southern California will add 55 billion gallons per year. Add everything under construction and you get maybe 150 to 200 billion gallons per year of new water. Now, California's water demand is 26 trillion gallons per year. Agriculture alone needs 34 million acre feet annually. Urban areas use 3 trillion gallons. They're adding billions when the problem requires trillions. But the real crisis isn't just scale, it's timing. Pure Water Southern California won't deliver its first water until 2032 or 2033. Sites Reservoir should be operational by 2030. The Delta Tunnel won't be complete until 2045. Meanwhile, 2023 was the wettest year on record. Then 2024 delivered record heat and flash drought. 2025 is back to below average precipitation and statewide rationing. The pattern keeps getting worse. Snowpack, which provides about 30% of California's water supply, keeps getting worse. Atmospheric rivers are getting more violent and less predictable. California is building for 2040, but the crisis is happening in 2025. Construction is losing the race. Now understand that 40 to 80% of California's developed water goes to agriculture. California's agricultural export industry generates $23 billion in revenue. Two thirds of the almonds grown in California get exported, mostly to China. And it gets even stranger. There are Saudi Arabian companies that have bought California water rights to grow alfalfa in the Imperial Valley and then ship that alfalfa back to Saudi Arabia. Meanwhile, over a million Californians don't have access to clean drinking water. Urban residents are taking 90-second showers, letting their lawns die, rationing every drop that comes out of their taps. But touching agricultural water allocations is politically untouchable. So the state keeps building more desalination, recycling and tunnels trying to squeeze water from a system that's already exhausted. The allocation numbers tell the truth. State Water Project, February 2025, 35%. Historical range is 5% 2014 to 100% wet years. The recent average is 40 to 60%. The Federal Central Valley Project isn't doing much better. February 2025 allocation, 35% for south of Delta contractors. Last year they hit 50% by June, still only half of what's needed. California built engineering marvels that will be national landmarks anywhere else, but it's still limping along at 40% capacity. This is what failure looks like when it costs billions. 
Impossible ideas follow a predictable path, first laughed at, then reluctantly considered, and finally taken seriously when desperation hits. California is fully in that third stage. Take Huntington Beach. A 50 million gallon per day desalination plant should have been a layup. Instead, they got 20 years of reviews, $100 million spent, and in 2022, the Coastal Commission shut it down because of brine issues, energy concerns, environmental pushback. Two decades wasted. No plants. Groundwater recharge? California finally has to stop bleeding its aquifers dry. The cost was roughly a million acres of farmland. And even if they do everything right, those aquifers won't meaningfully recover until 2050. Farmers need water now, not in a generation. These are reasonable ideas, and they're barely moving. So now the state is eyeing proposals that once were punchlines. The Columbia River dumps 265 billion gallons into the Pacific daily, while Californians ration showers. The zombie idea? A thousand-mile pipeline from the Pacific Northwest. Killed for 60 years, it keeps resurfacing because the math screams needed, even as politics blocks it. Then there's the Cadiz proposal, which somehow manages to sound even more desperate. Cadiz Inc. wants to tap an ancient Mojave aquifer, pumping water 220 miles south using recycled Keystone XL pipeline steel. Trump approved in 2018, Biden revoked in 2022. Environmentalists warn of destroying a desert ecosystem thousands of years old. In 2022, a federal judge upheld the permit revocation. That's where things stand. Draining fossil aquifers because sustainable solutions take too long. And then there's the Salton Sea Plan. Pump ocean water 120 miles from Mexico, diluting its increasingly toxic lake. Gravity helps, but desalination is massive, costs over a billion, and requires an international treaty. But the Army Corps of Engineers is currently conducting a three-year feasibility study. They're analyzing whether pumping ocean water 125 miles from another country to fill a lake that California killed by diverting all its water in the first place is a viable solution. That's California water management in 2025. California pulled off feats most states couldn't dream of. On paper, this is the kind of infrastructure that should end water crises, not prolong them. Yet here they are. Billions pumped into the desert, megaprojects stretching into the 2040s, and allocation stuck at 35%. Still rationing. Still reviving ideas that were jokes in the 60s. Still treating desperation as policy. California isn't battling drought anymore, it's trying to outrun nature. And the brutal truth is that the clock may already be ahead of them. So here's the real question. If California can't build fast enough, who can? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching it. And if you like, make sure to share, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss our next mega build story.